Margaret. Miss Johnson, I'm in the most incredible trouble with my mom again. You've got to help me. Well, what happened this time? Well, she never believes me. Last night. Oh! There's my boyfriend. Yes. I'll talk to you after lit today, okay, Miss Johnson? It's vital. Real good, Margaret. Sure. No! Oh, good morning, Alice. Good morning. Hi, Alice. Hi. Beautiful day, isn't it? Is it? Oh, yeah, I guess it is. Are you okay? Sure, fine. Well. Were you up all night grading papers again? Uh-huh. Some kids came by and then Margaret Peters phoned again. Well, I couldn't turn them away. You know, you keep this up, you're going to be the best love teacher in the hospital. At least I'd get some sleep. There are still a number of delinquent candy accounts. Any student on the delinquent list must turn in their money or the chocolates by Friday without fail. All right, Barney, would you and George please uh, pass out the books Mr. Dragon had sent up? Is that our next assignment? Yes, Margaret. Silas Marner. Come on. Come on now. It's a classic. Classic. That means it's guaranteed to put you to sleep, right? Why can't we study the books we like once in a while? Because they ain't classic, man. Well, in a sense. See, they haven't withstood the test of time. Yeah, but that don't mean that they aren't fun to read and that we can't learn lots from them. Teachers think you only learn something when it hurts. Now, that's not true, Barney. But we do have a certain curriculum we must follow. Yeah, but I bet you'd rather read modern books just like us, wouldn't you, Miss Johnson? Sure she would. She's not a creep like old man Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon thinks anything after Nathaniel Hawthorne is science fiction. Science <laughs> fiction is practically pornography. <laughs> not everyone has the same taste. Besides, Mr. Dragon is head of the English department. So we gotta read a book he likes. Miss Johnson, we just got through with the old classic. Why can't we study a book we want, and then we'll study that old Silas Mourner? Yeah, right on. Well, do you have a book in mind, Pat? Uh, how about Catch-22? Catch-22? Yeah, it won all kinds of literary awards, and lots of people think it's a really great book. What's it about? Well, see, there's this dude, you're Syrian, and he's in the Army, right? And he wants out. And the only way you can get out is to tell the medics you're crazy. But if he knows that he wants out, then he can't be crazy, so he's in, which really makes him crazy. And if the dude asks to get out, then he can't be crazy. So, I mean, that's catch-22, dig it? <laughs> kind of reminds me of school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Miss Johnson. Be a good egg, please. Let's read the book we want, and then we'll read the book you want. Miss Johnson's with us, Pat. She wants to study the same book as us. Don't you, Miss Johnson? Well, all right. But first we'll study Silas Marner, then Catch-22. Oh, why can't we do it the other way around? We're still recuperating from the mill on the floss. Yeah, and we'll feel so great after Catch-22, we won't mind Silas Marner so much. It'll help the educational process. Okay, Miss Johnson, Catch-22 first, please. You know, we could use a few of you kids at the Paris Peace Talks. Okay, it's a deal. First catch 22, but then Silas Marner. Fantastic! Best teacher at Whitman. You can say that again. Best teacher at Whitman. <laughs> <laughs> it's my boyfriend. My parents don't approve, especially Mom. So when I called you last night? Oh, yes, at 11 o'clock. I was Ms. with Johnson. Mo. Oh, Miss Johnson, Johnson, you thought about that beer, Marnie? Yeah? Bernie, I can't. Miss Johnson, I don't know what you're telling me. It's not the Wait a minute, Margaret. 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 Wait a minute,
I have to go. Oh, please, you're not like the other teachers. You understand. Just initial it, okay, Miss Johnson? Now, you will explain the particulars to your mother, won't you, Margaret? Oh, sure, of course, I promise. Oh, thanks, you're great, Oh, Miss Johnson. Johnson. fantastic. What about my bee? We'll see. I have to talk to Mr. Dragon. Can I ask him what he thinks of Catch-22? When Mr. Kaufman is sergeant in my department, I was a little less than enthused. But from all reports, it appears you've been able to instill into your students a rare enthusiasm, which I shall be only too pleased to know to my evaluation report of your work at the end of the semester. Well done, Miss Johnson. Thank you. Now then, how is your lit class 204A getting on with Silas Marner? Oh, well, um, Mr. Dragon, what I've done is, um, well, the class is sort of aiming at Silas Marner. You know, getting in the mood, preparing. Good. Great book. My personal favorite. And perhaps the greatest book in our entire curriculum. Well, keep up the good work, Miss Johnson. Oh, Miss Johnson. Yes, Mr. Dragon. Get some sleep. Good morning. Oh, <clears throat> good morning. Having any problems? Oh, no, no. I uh, left some papers in my desk that needed marking. I just thought I'd get here early, but I didn't realize that the doors would be locked. You didn't realize? That the doors would be locked. <laughs> I see. Okay, kid, what are you doing here? Kid? But I'm Miss Johnson. I happen to be a teacher. That's funny. Most teachers know what time school starts. What do you teach, kid? English. English, huh? Hmm. Okay, who wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin? Uncle Tom's Cabin? Well, that's easy. That's simple. Well, let's see. Everybody knows Uncle Tom's Cabin. It's uh, a book. Well, I didn't think it was a motel. All right, don't get wise. Harriet Beecher Stowe. Who was the bad guy? Simon Legree. And do you want me to tell you who it reminds me of? <laughs> okay. I guess you're a teacher, all right. <laughs> Thanks. Do you mind if I give you a word of advice? What is it? Don't burn the candle on both ends. It ain't worth it. Try to get some sleep at night, Miss Johnson. <laughs> Emergency clinic, Alice. You know, you're not supposed to be on duty 24 hours a day. But they're such great kids, Pete. Sure, but you can't do everything. Teach your regular classes, give special tutoring, and handle their individual emotional problems. It's too much. How'd you like to coach the baseball team on the side? Well, I am getting a little worn down, but... What time did you get to bed last night? Well, after I finished grading some of these quiz papers about... Oh, no, then Natasha Rogers called, and then Margaret again. Oh, about 1.32. Dallas, you have got to learn how to say no. Pete's right. You've got to draw the line. I mean, I'm a sensitive, sympathetic counselor, but I don't get phone calls all hours of the night. How do you manage it? Leave the phone off the hook. Of course it's a comedy, a black comedy. Right, right. How can you tell a book about war and men getting killed funny? Yeah, but that's what black comedy is. If you don't laugh, baby, you'd be crying all the time. I disagree. No. Personally, it's an immoral book. Oh, don't tell me. My father was in World War II, and this makes it all sound like it was crazy. So what did your father think about the book? I don't know. Well, Barney, why didn't you ask him? Okay. All right, read the next three chapters for tomorrow. I know immorality. <laughs> yes. Miss Johnson, you must be a veritable miracle worker. 
Really? To see a class so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed after 40 minutes of Silas Marner. You know, that proves that our students can learn to appreciate the classics if they're taught with uh, enthusiasm and, and verve. <laughs> Thank you. You know, tomorrow, I'm going to permit myself a very special treat. What treat is that, Mr. Dragon? I'm going to witness firsthand what you're doing with Silas Marner. I'm going to audit your class. See you, Miss Johnson. What's the matter? You're not hungry? Oh, no, not very. All right, Alice. Come on. What's on your mind? You know, I'm um, teaching Silas Marner. Yeah. Well, I'm not exactly teaching Silas Marner. You're not? I'm teaching Catch-22. Figures? No, you don't understand. You see, the kids let, felt... Let me guess. The kids felt that Silas Marner would be a drag, but that Catch-22 would be fun, right? And you felt the kids would hate you if you forced them into that dusty old classic. But if you allowed them to read a swinging modern classic, they'd love you. Am I close? Exactly. Mm -hmm. But that's still not all. Mr. Dragon's going to audit my class today. What am I going to do, Liz? I'll tell you what I'd do. What? For openers? I'd pray. 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 What do you mean we've gotten all we can out of Catch-22? We're hardly even into it. What's going on, Miss Johnson? Sounds yeah. like cop-out time to me. Yeah, yeah. 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 We had an agreement, remember? Catch-22 first, then we dig into Silas Marner. Now, would you please get out your copies of Silas Marner? Oh. Mine is home. Mine, too. We didn't know we were supposed to bring them. Of course you didn't. All right, let's go on with Catch-22. Yeah. Barney, you were going to ask your father what he thought of the book. Has he read it? Yeah, he said he read it when it first came out. Uh... Excuse me, Miss Johnson. People, please go on. That's as if I weren't here. Yes, of course. Well, uh, now, where were we? Oh, yes. Uh, Barney, you were about to tell us what your father thought of the book. Oh, well, I'm not... Wonderful! Now, that's wonderful, Miss Johnson, bringing the views of the parents into the classroom. Uh oh sorry. Go on. Just as if I weren't here. Go ahead, Barney. Oh, well, um... Uh... It's all right, Barney. Now, go ahead. What'd your father have to say? Well... Well, he said a lot of things in the book were exaggerated, like the way the nurses in the hospital cared more about their personal problems than they did about the patient. <laughs> yes, uh, practically everything in the book was exaggerated. Now, what do you think the author's intent was in exaggerating reality the way he did? Pat? Well, it's just like in a painting. Sometimes the artist has to exaggerate certain features in order to get his point across. Yeah, like the cat who called it the whole cotton market in Egypt. That was impossible. But, you know, there were cats in the army stealing stuff and selling it. Good. Now, does anybody else have an... Uh, excuse me, uh, just a moment, Ms. Johnson. I, uh, must have come in here somewhere in the middle. Hospitals, nurses, stealing cotton. Now, I don't like to interrupt, but could someone please tell me what happened to Silas Marner and all this? Miss Johnson? I'm not upset, Miss Johnson. But I am seriously disappointed. But Catch-22 is a marvelous novel. It's a controversial novel, my dear. Silas Marner, on the other hand, is a time-tested classic. More importantly, it's on your teaching plan. Therefore, I suggest you teach it. I was going to. Miss Johnson, as you know, this is the first year of your probationary period. Yes, sir. Not a very promising beginning, is it? Not at all. 
From now on, Miss Johnson, you must place your trust in Silas Marner. I'll try. I hope so. I sincerely hope so. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Dragon. Uh, Miss Johnson, you wanted in Mr. Kaufman's office right now. Peter, this is to let you know that your daughter, Margaret Celestine Peters, was studying with me last night as she claimed she was. Yours very truly, A. Jane. You wanted to see me, Mr. Coffin? Yes, come in, Miss Johnson. Uh, I don't believe you've met Margaret's mother, Mrs. Peters. No, no, but I certainly wanted to meet you and find out what you thought you were doing when you signed that note. I'm sorry, Miss Johnson. Honest, honest isn't a word I want to hear from you, Margaret. I think I can explain, Mrs. Peters. Please do. My daughter goes hoop de doing off with a boy all hours of the night, and her teacher signs a note saying that she is studying. What do you teach, Miss Johnson, sex education? I don't think that's fair, Mrs. Peters. I think there's a reasonable explanation. Well, I'd certainly like to hear one. Miss Johnson? Well, I'm afraid I did sign the note. We were studying. She did call me. I suppose that's a little misleading, but you were studying on the phone? What kind of a story is that? It's a true one. I'm certain, Mrs. Peters, it's too far out to be anything else. I am equally certain that Miss Johnson was doing what she thought was best for Margaret, weren't you, Miss Johnson? Be that as it may, Mr. Kaufman, you cannot explain away the fact that one of your teachers joined in a conspiracy to deceive a parent, and I don't like it, not one bit. Come on, Margaret, I want to talk to you. I'm sorry, Miss Johnson. Miss Johnson, do you know why a teacher teaches for three years before he receives tenure? Well, I suppose if he or she can't do his or her job, he or she can be let go or fired. Exactly. You gonna fire me, Mr. Kaufman? Miss Johnson, I like your enthusiasm for teaching. I like your dedication, but aren't you aware of what this kind of foolish, thoughtless behavior can lead to? I'm sorry. I... Well, I'm afraid that's not good enough. Now look. You've asked me if I'm going to fire you. I can only tell you that at the end of the semester, I will review your work and Mr. Dragan's evaluation, and I'll make a decision. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. Oh, don't thank me because, uh, well, I just hope I never hear anything like this again. Yes, sir. And Miss Johnson. I will be listening very carefully. Alice, don't you think Mr. Kaufman was justified in reading your... I guess so. Alice, do you want to be a teacher? Of course I do. Then why don't you act like it? What do you mean? Well, your first responsibility is to teach English, right? Well, you've let your students' personal problems interfere with that job. I don't know. I guess I'm just a flop. Alice, if you're ever going to teach, you've got to get over this idea that your students have to love you. They don't. What they have to do is learn. And what you have to do is teach them. But I don't know where to start. Start with Silas Marner. <laughs> Three weeks since I committed the treasonous act of forcing you to put aside Catch-22 and read Silas Marner. You didn't want to study Silas Marner. <laughs> I didn't particularly want to teach it. <laughs> but what about Silas himself and the life he lived? You call that living? What do you call it, Barney? 
Personally, it's a pretty miserable existence. You mean because yeah. Silas was a miser? Sure, all he cared about was money. He certainly wasn't the most fun-loving cat in town. <laughs> <laughs> is the meaning of Silas Marner that money is bad? Well, no. all that bought old Silas is being lonely. Yeah, but that's because he used it like a shield to keep people away from him, right? Oh, come on. Okay, stop. Know what we've been doing? Thinking about Silas Marner. Arguing about it. And I bet some of us have actually been enjoying it. See, <laughs> it's possible. Hey, so that's why when he lost all that old gold, he was like vulnerable. And he could love that little girl, Epi, right? In other words, when he lost the money, he was forced to change, right? Yeah. Okay, now remember, this is a time when England was changing. The Industrial Revolution was coming on like a steam engine. So that hanging on to gold was like hiding from change. If you don't hang loose, you're dead. Right. That's right. What do you think of Jason's interpretation of Silas Marner, Mr. Dragon? Huh. Oh, well, it is a somewhat unorthodox view of the book. It wasn't the gold that was bad, it was Silas believing in it. Don't you think everybody's got to change their beliefs once they find out they're dragging behind the times? Uh, oh, well, actually, you have a, a very interesting point there. You mean you believe in revolution? In change. Uh, in change, I hope there is a difference. Some people think one's impossible without the other. Oh, is that what you right. think, Pat? Yeah. Well, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure. Well, what about the changes that have taken place in this country over the years? What kind of changes? Uh, well, what ones can you think of? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Dragon, but I think I'm right. No, Jason, the thoughts of Chairman Mouse simply don't apply to Stylus. But, Mr. Dragon, I think I'm right. I don't care. Have you decided about my B yet, Miss Jackson? Yes. You'll get a B if and when you earn it. And it's well within your capacity. You know something, Miss Jackson? You've changed. Well, that's what Silas Marner was all about, wasn't it? Miss Johnson, you're never going to believe this. But what? But I'm in trouble with my mother again, and I've got to talk to you. Look, Margaret, we're going to have to limit our conversations to what goes on in class. Now, you have friends to discuss your personal problems with. And if they're serious, you can go see your counselor. Between the hours of 8 and 4, in my office, OK, Margaret? Oh, well, Miss McIntyre, sweat. I've been trying to get up the nerve to do that for weeks. Well, that wasn't so bad, was it? Well, actually, it's a great relief. Except, except what? Well, Margaret says she has another problem with her mother. About what? Well, that's just it. Now it looks like I'm never going to find out. <laughs> And then Mr. Dragon said he had never encountered so many far-fetched interpretations of a book. Is that good? <laughs> no, but he said he'd never encountered such enthusiasm either. That is good. So what are you going to teach next? Well, we're going to finish Catch-22. Catch-22? Yes, Mr. Dragon said it was all right since the class handled Silas Marner the way they did. Well, you should be very proud. Oh, I am. And Mr. Dragon even preferred Catch-22 to a classic. One of the kids suggested we study. Dragon did to a classic? Which one? Lady Chatterley's lover. <laughs>